Uh, as we know, March is Nutrition Month, so we wanted to just highlight um, a few things um, having to do with nutrition and wellness, um, just to help us get uh, on track for 2016, right? We wonder why, why are we having this? Why are we not? Sometimes we can say, okay, maybe this food or that food had caused this issue. Um, but if it's an ongoing issue, and for me it was quite a bit of years, I'm just like, okay, I'm young, I'm fit, or at least I look fit, um, I look healthy, but that's not always the case. As good as someone can look, you never really know what's going on with inside of your body. This food sensitivity test, which was a blood test, actually told me what foods my body was sensitive to. And it let me know that I had a reaction to these foods. So after learning which foods actually uh, cause this happen in my body, I was able to eliminate them for a certain period of time um, so that I could actually have results. But I kid you not, after about two weeks of eliminating all of the foods, I went completely back to normal. No burping, I mean the acne still hung around for a little bit. <laughs> um, but I was able to get back on track and actually feel better enough. By the way, my name is Dr. Ronnie Flood. So I'm the naturopathic doctor here at North Shore Medical and Aesthetic Center. And one of the big differences between a naturopathic doctor and a conventional doctor is that we really have a lot of focus in our educational component on food and nutrition. So being that this is Nutrition Week, it's a really perfect time to talk about, yes, what is really the purpose of food to deliver the nutrients that our body needs. Yes, it tastes wonderful. Yes, it's a fun social event to eat. But the real purpose of food is to deliver nutrition. Just like the question that came up, so what do I eat? You know, we are used to eating a certain way. We have all these traditional foods that we see all the time. Barbecue chicken, the baked chicken, the macaroni and cheese, the peas and rice. And Alex talked a little bit about food sensitivities and the fact that we do this food sensitivity testing here. And we have really found that I, not a single person has come back without some food sensitivities. It can really lead to a lot of health problems down the road, and one of the causes is a lack of diversity in the diet. Just continually, repetitively eating the same foods, the body starts to become sensitive, like this protein again. In Asia, where they eat a lot of soya, they also eat a lot of seaweed. Sometimes when we take a food out of a culture and borrow it to our own culture, we just want that part and we don't take the rest. If you need a lot of seaweed, seaweed tends to balance the estrogenic effects of soya. So have seaweed salad from time to time. The same thing that grab sushi, you can make sushi home. You can. I don't advocate the great uh, too much eating of sushi because raw fish tends to have a bit of parasites and again, in Asia, where they eat a lot of sushi, they also consume a lot of the horseradish, the wasabi. But we say, I don't like the wasabi, I just want the sushi. Then we don't get the anti-parasitic effect of the wasabi, okay? So if you're going to have your sushi, you should have the wasabi, have the ginger in good amounts, okay? It'll keep your intestines clean. Then come every now and then for a parasite purge as well. Um, and if you need a lot of soya, you may want to also add iodine or some seaweed into your diet.